In this example, there are three functions. The main function is called mindstats, and within this function, there are two subfunctions, one called mymean, and the other called mymedian. The subfunction is defined the exact same way as the main function, but the difference is that the subfunction is available to functions in this M file only. You cannot call your subfunctions at the command window or from another M file. In the above example, the main function calls both of these subfunctions, making the code much shorter and simpler. For longer, more complex code, this can save you a lot of debugging time by breaking down your code into smaller pieces. What we will do now is use the subfunction concept to incorporate the main program, which is Beam5, and the function bending stress into one M file, which will be called main function. So let's start by opening up Beam5 and the bending stress functions. Now copy the code from the bending stress function file to the end of Beam5. Notice this error. It says that we can't have a function here. That's right, we can have functions if and only if our file is a function file, and right now it's still a script file. Remember that to change our .m file from a script file to a function file, we need a function statement in the first line of code. So let's do that now. Let's go to the top and add function main function. And we're going to add end right here. We now created the main function, which allows us to have subfunctions. Notice that this main function does not even have inputs or outputs, so it doesn't really look like the function we're used to. That's right, we won't be using this function like we usually do. Just know that this syntax is just a sneaky way to change our file to a function file, which al allows us to have some functions. Now let's save as, and if you guess that we need to call this file main function, you're spot on. Again, to create a function file, its function name has to be the same as its file name. Let's run main function. Great, we get the same plot once more. Let's now use the debugger to check that our sixth bending stress value is still the same as the one we found earlier for an inner radius of one centimeter. So let's add a red dot here at the end. And we'll check our sigma x. Yep, negative 101.8592. We're all set.